So for my literacy intervention and assessment comprehensive project, I decided to make a PowerPoint. And I decided to do this just to help keep me kind of on track and hopefully I don't go off topic too much. So it doesn't actually contain a lot of information also because I didn't want to just read from it. But I decided to have just a little bit of fun with it and add my Bitmoji on the slides. So let's get started. There we go. So distance tutoring and distance learning. I think we can all say that this semester was definitely one for learning. Hopefully we don't have another semester quite like it. That's what I'm hoping for. There were a lot of new things that we had to learn, but I really felt like we were really supported in this course by Dr. Rowan Miller. And because of that, because of the support that she showed us, I really felt like I was able to then also support the student that I was tutoring this semester. And I think it's an important thing to note that even though we're online and we're not actually there, and we can't really create those physical in-person connections, but we can still make connections with our students over the internet, over Zoom, over Google Meet, whatever it is. And it's important to still build those connections and build those relationships and get to know our students so that we can teach them to the best of our ability. One of the things that really stuck out was the Garfield reading attitude survey that we did. I think it was the, it was the very first week of our tutoring with our students. And with that, we were able to see the students' attitudes towards reading more on the recreational setting and in the learning setting. And that right there can, I feel like, showed so much. And it was such a great indication of how important it is to learn these types of things. You know, if we can see that the students really don't learn, like learning in the school setting, we can do things a little bit differently. So that maybe they don't think of it as so much as a school setting. You know, we find books that they enjoy reading, authors that they enjoy, and take that information and apply it so that, you know, we can keep them motivated and keep them interested in what we're learning. You know, we have to still get to know our students just like we would if we were in the classroom with them. Worksheets versus activities. I feel like this is one topic that we discussed quite a bit, especially because of all of the different lesson plans that we made about the fact that activities and projects are going to be better, especially in this setting with the intervention time, than worksheets. Now, there can be a time and a place for worksheets, but I found that the activities that I would do with my student really helped to keep them motivated and interested, and they looked forward to it. And there were some activities that we ended up doing several times because the student would ask, hey, can we play, she called it a game, you know, a learning game. Hey, can we play this game? I'm like, yeah, if we have extra time, sure, we'll see if we can fit that in. And I feel like that just shows that the students enjoy it, even though technically it's still learning. They like it, and they enjoy it, and they want to take part in it, you know, which in turn, I feel like helps with student success, because if they are wanting to take do those activities and those projects, and they're working hard and applying what they know, and working to improve their skills, they're being successful, in my opinion. You know, if they are improving from where they started, I feel like that's a successful outcome. Also, when it's been mentioned, there's not much re research to support the worksheets, that the worksheets are going to help 
increase student success and increase student grades. There's not many re there's not much research research wow to show that. Um, it was actually discussed. This was also discussed in my educational psychology class this semester, and with the elementary children, there's like no connection between worksheets and grades and student success and student comprehension. And I felt like that was really shown during this course too. And I also found a lot of great resources that I want to keep and use in my own class. Maybe share them with other educators. Maybe see if I can incorporate them during student teaching. Found a lot of great resources for a lot of great activities throughout this course. Which leads me into assessments. We did a lot of assessments during this course. A lot of free assessments, a lot of post assessments to just to see where our students were. And I feel like this with this course was very beneficial in giving me the experience with the Dibbles and past and QPS. I can go in and say, hey, I've given these assessments in my college courses. I have experience with them. I know how to give them. And I feel like that's extremely beneficial going into education in the workplace after graduation. Um, one thing that also was a really big takeaway from this course was being able to conclude what assessment results mean. I got the results, but now what do I do with them? What does that mean? You know, does it mean that this student knows how to do this one skill, that they can break words up into syllables? Does it mean that they need more practice with this skill or this skill? during intervention time. And then in, as a result, if you know what the results mean and where the students need improvement, you know where to spend your intervention time. You know what needs to be a big focus of your intervention time in order to hopefully improve upon those scores that they got on their pre-assessments. Now you're not just pulling random things that maybe the student does not need more time on. And if you can read your assessment results, we can know that. And that's a great skill to, to also take into the workplace, being able to read your assessment results and determine what that means, determine what still needs work, determine what doesn't need work. So overall, I'll be honest, this stress or this course, when I started reading the syllabus at the beginning and seeing everything that we had to do, it really kind of stressed me out. But now that I'm done with it, I've taken away so much information. And I feel like this has been one of the most beneficial courses that I've taken at Fort Hayes. And I'm just really grateful to Dr. Broman Miller for helping to support us too during this crazy time. Even though it had to be over the internet. She was always there to answer our questions, and that's what I also would like to be as an educator in the future. So I hope you guys all have a great Christmas break and a great next semester, or if next semester is your student teaching, I hope you get to be in the classroom. <laughs>